You guys wanted more tier lists. We gave you an assist trophy tier list. We gave you final smash. We even gave you pokeball. So now we're giving you all the items. If you want any other tier list, please be sure to subscribe and comment below. Because if you guys just want tier lists, we'll do tier lists. So first, let's talk about the worst item in the game, which is Smoke Ball. It's really insignificant because you just throw the Smoke Ball on and it hides your opponent's movement, which is kind of the last thing you really want it to do. Because if anything, I want to hide what I'm doing. I don't know what he's charging right now. You can take a Smoke Ball and throw it at your own feet, but it doesn't stick to you. Like, you can hold it, but then you aren't actionable with it unless you throw it. Like, it's just... The only way you can really influence a smoke ball is by throwing it at your opponent. And even the, I don't, I don't know, man. This item's boring, it's lame, it's bad, it's just bad. Oh, right, let's talk about the chickens. This, again, it just annoys your opponent. It just attacks whoever it hits or whoever hits it. It's not really good. I mean, I guess it makes the stage all mine, which makes it kind of good. I'm just gonna place it bad because it's just annoying. I turn it off. No one wants to see that happen. I think beehives is just slightly better than chickens, but even then, it kind of sucks. The items added to Smash 4 were arguably the weakest in the series. The things they added just weren't cool. <laughs> like, every item they added in Smash 4 just wasn't cool. I'm pretty sure some characters can use it to their advantage. Like, Diddy Kong can just uh, use his uh, upbeat. Yeah, he can just bring out infinite barrels. You can just upbe forever. It's just, man, and smaller, uh, you deal less knockback, and uh, you receive more. My down tilt almost kills, and my nair definitely not. So that's where you go from a lightning kick at 70. This is where you go from a lightning kick at 70. Yep, like if we're both big, you take less knockback, but you don't take more damage. Like, your size does not affect damage, and that's the most confusing thing about it all. Ramblin' Evil Mushroom, this thing is just kind of, this just reverses your controls. It's just annoying. You can also throw it to get them to reverse controls. It has to be like the big one, I think. Again, this is one of those items I just turn off because it's just like Palkia or Skull Kid or something. Like, it's just lame. I have no opinions on Fire Flower. I think it's obnoxious. Also, it's the slowest projectile when falling, so you can't really get anything cool with it. I guess, like, when they're off stage, it's, it's a funny edge guard. Curry is, it's just lame. All it does is just stun your opponent like this and... <laughs> actionable flyer, fire flower. You yeah. can get some stuff out of it. Yeah, like the thing is, it's not bad because I, I can, uh, you can usually do this and like F smash because it also changes where it goes depending on what animation you're in. Because it goes in and out of your mouth, I guess is a good way to put it. In a 1v1, this move is really hard to hit because who's gonna really get hit by this? In a free for all, you might catch someone off guard, but even then, I feel like everyone's cautious as soon as they hear it. So I don't really know. Bomber is kind of strange. Because it's one of those things where you want to hold so your opponent doesn't have, but it's not necessarily good. But like, if your opponent's off stage and then you want to like get it and try and get some kind of read for it, you can get something with it. It's just like, you can react to them holding this. It's like the opposite of special flag, which instead of approaching them to hit them, you just run away from them. And it's really hard to trap your opponent into that. Freezy is another item where if you hit it, it just detonates. You can throw it at your opponent and then they're frozen. You pretty much just get a free hit after that. Or if you just want positioning, you can uh, hit them into the icicle and now you have the stage and you can get whatever item spawns. So it's kind of good. It's just, eh. again, who cares? Special flag is a hilarious thing to go online with preferred rules and turn on because it just gives you an extra stock you can get hit out of it, but the thing is, the projectiles don't do anything. So, if I hit someone off, if I hit someone off stage, uh, I'm just gonna do it. Uh, he might hit me, he might not. Oh, he hit me, but it's a little too late. I can just kind of get an F smash or any strong hit I want. And then while he's dead, I'm like, uh oh, I'm gonna use it. But even then, it's still hard to get against most people. It just gives you an extra stock or an extra kill in a time battle or something like that. So, in most situations, you do get punished for it. But if you like, if your opponent's on stage, you're gonna get punished, period. Rocket Belt has an RNG chance to cancel your hit stun whenever you get hit by a very strong hit, which is just a weird thing we're not gonna show, because how do we really exemplify that? Because it's RNG. It's not really anything cool, it just kinda happens, and then we deal with it. 
So, uh... Sometimes it's really more annoying than it is helpful. Especially if you get it at, like, low percents. Yeah. Because then you just can't really follow up on anything. Yeah, because if you try and jump and then you accidentally... It, I mean, Diddy just has this moveset. Everyone knows what Banana does. Yeah. I mean, I'm just going to say that it just gives you free follow-ups if you're nearby or if you're away from items, it just distracts you. Uh, really don't have to say a lot about this item because I feel like being incorporated in the actual base game of Diddy Kong's moveset, I feel like you guys already know what it does. Black Hole can be a polarizing thing because it brings all the items in. So it's kind of like if my opponent happens to have an have a Pokeball, it's now his. What if I want to punish him, but he has a really good burst option, like this Uppy? Suddenly it becomes so much harder to punish him while also making him leave. The important thing to know is that if you throw this off stage and your opponent Uppies into it, it takes them out of Special Fall and they can Uppy again. Kill Rai is kind of just another thing where very low risk, very high reward. You just throw up a turret, because it's not really great, but proportional to the amount of effort it takes to place it there, it's pretty good because it just takes me placing a turret and then it's all mine. If you hit it, it reverses, or whichever way you hit it on, it reverses. So if I hit it over here, it reverses. If I hit it over here, oh, it just flies away sometimes. Star Rod, you just charge it up. And like every other Smash Tech, you can charge it up forever, but you have to charge it up for it to initiate it. I feel like it's much weaker when you charge it up in this game, but you can do jab, you can do F tilt, and you can do F smash. Most battering items just replace your jab, F tilt, F smash. This is no different, but again, strong throwing projectile, but not quite as strong as the beam sword per se. What do you think of metal box? I think it's the cheesiest item, uh, uh -huh. just because it's kind of good. Yeah, you can probably get thrown, but you take way less knockback. You take less knockback than like shield shulk. Like it's a little insane. I get metal box, get thrown off. Yeah, you fall so much faster, so recovering is a little bit harder. Pow Block is an item that if you hit it or throw it on the ground or anywhere, as long as your opponent's grounded, they will be launched up. The camera distorts, which uh, makes it hard for everybody to play the video game. But if they're in the air, it doesn't affect them. It is a reliable kill move if someone's at like 120, 150 or something like that. Because then as soon as like you know you want to kill them. So shielding does stop it, but as soon as they land and you want to kill them, you definitely have a way to do it at higher percent, so it's really not reliable, but at least you have something. Super Launch Star is probably one of the coolest items. It is the coolest item, actually. It's the best item I got out of this game. Yeah. It's honestly my favorite item in Smash, period. The direction you throw it is, it will send the opposite direction. So know this because there's a whole lot of shenanigans you can do if you place this right above the ledge. So if you throw it down, it has potential to go up and kill off the top blast zone. Very weird for a movement thing like that to work. And if you want it to spike someone, go off stage, throw it up. And then if they go in it, just spike them and it's hilarious. Um, the most deadly thing to do is to actually occupy the space on stage to throw them off stage because, you know, that's just a horrible place to be. The only thing that makes it bad is that you can be sent into it as well. And uh, it's just, you don't get more rewards than your opponent or anything like that. It's just, it's a percent thing and it affects both players equally. Also, it's a really short timer too. Yeah, it's it expires super quick. Z-dropping with it, I could be wrong, but I feel like in my history of Z-dropping it, it's just random which direction it goes. Sometimes it goes left and right, sometimes it goes up and down. So I'm not gonna act like I know. And also you can tell which way the star is going to send just by speculation, or just by observing it. Because whatever way it's cheating out, like since it's facing up, it will send up. And if I throw this one down, you see how it's facing down. Like you can tell just by looking at it, you don't have to wonder which way it's going to throw. So this is probably the best place to put it, um, just on the stage like that. Because it's very easy to get hit into that. But again, when recovering back to the stage after throwing it, I would be very careful because you are sacrificing a crucial amount of stage to put it somewhere. Bunny Hood is uh, really good. It allows for like a lot of really scary combos. So the, the trade-off is you are faster, you jump higher, but you are lighter. But then you can get like stuff like that that you wouldn't normally get. Even when like uh, this up throw won't kill, like you can still like go up there. Every character becomes melee fox at this point. Yeah. Everyone can pretty much up their weapon. It's terrifying. Lipstick. Uh, it's a cute item. If you throw it, it forces tripping, which uh, means you get a follow-up from that. And as you can tell by Girl Fox's percent, if you hit someone with it, they get the little flower on their head, and they just gain percent. Screw attack. Not as cool as it has been before, but it just makes everything you do same as Uppy. 
And a lot of characters can get some really dumb stuff, but I feel like they've nerfed it because the angles are much more likely to send out than up. So just because you have it doesn't really mean you get a free kill. Um, Ray Gun is decent. It's more just like Falco Laser, but faster and on the whole cast. What if that's what Falco Laser was, though? Ooh. Would you be a happy boy? I would be very happy. Look at that. Kind of yeah, look at that short hop double laser. Fake Smash Ball is interesting because it just blows up. And, like, after you play Smash for a little bit, you can easily tell the difference of it. But there is some strategy whenever it's near your opponent, so you just blow it up when they're there, if you have a projectile. So, like, if he's over here, and, like, what if I'm a stock up? I'm just going to blow it up, because I don't care. Yeah. Yeah, so sometimes you can get some trades in it. I, I think it's not as deceiving as it looks, because once you figure it out, it's not like you're going to really fall for it twice. Yeah, it's like the uh, fake item box in Mario Kart. You just kind of just figure it out. Yeah, exactly. That's ex honestly exactly what it is. <sighs> so the staff is kind of cool. It's the further away you are, the more damage it does. So if I'm very far away, it's just going to kill. But, like, being far away from someone who doesn't want to be far away from you is very hard. Because if I'm trying to camp them out and get this, it's very easy for him to just close the gap and say, no, 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 I'm going to be close. In an actual game, if he's, like, off stage and now I can hit him, like, that's kind of my chance to get the distance, but outside of that, it's very hard to actually be far away from someone who doesn't want to be far away from you. The X-Bomb kind of replaced what the Smart Bomb used to be because it, this one actually kills, but can be easily SDI'd. I feel like there has to be some insane multiplier on this because it's very easy to get out of this one. Uh, Bomb Chew's cute. He just kind of patrols on a platform and blows up as soon as something hits him. You can put him on a stage and he goes around. It's just kind of obnoxious, and it's very easy for your opponents to forget about it. Only a big weakness to it is it can be reflected, so yeah. it's going to get you really quickly. I really like to throw it the other way, because then it's much easier for your opponents to not realize you had it, or to throw it on platforms, because then there's a whole lot of nonsense you can do with that. Smart Bomb falls under the same category as other bombs, where your own bomb will not blow up, so that's really good. Because this area used to be scary when it was a, a neutral projectile, if you will. Now it's free combos for you. Yeah, like I can get anything I want. I can even go in there and add a little damage right after. Whoops. Yeah. There, there's a whole lot of combo potential with this. I mean, even if I do this right here, I can still up smash and get some extra damage. So the death scythe is a little bit funny to see some smash characters. Again, A, F tilt, F smash. And uh, if someone is at high percent and you use it, I think it's probably either 90 or 100. I think it's 100 flat. Yep, so 90 or 100 after the hit, who knows, but they just die. The nice thing about battering items now is that you can just do any aerial you want. It's only jab or F tilt, and F tilt isn't the execute. You gotta F smash them, and then they execute. Galaga is another mashing item. It goes up, selects a player, and it stops right where it is, and then takes them off to the sky. You can mash out, you probably will mash out, but the higher percent you are, the harder it is. Also, if you hit the Galaga before, it becomes purple, and it becomes even harder to mash out of. So uh, that's something to watch out for, and it's much faster. Did you see how quick that was compared to the other one? Rage Blaster is fairly interesting. It does 1.9 damage if you're at 0%. Now you use it at 50%. It does 14 now. So Rage Blaster does more damage the higher percent you're at. So. If you're losing, this is actually one of the best comeback moves in the game. Because now it's doing 27, and boy, this is going to start killing soon. But the banana gun itself is actually just a very strong kill option. For some reason, at 70, yeah, it should kill. And then it just turns into a regular old banana peel. So, cool and all, but like, the banana peel, we could care less about. Just the fact that you get one shot makes it a little worse, because most guns have multiple but I still think just the one-shot banana, it's fast enough to be really good. Blast Box is very polarizing when it comes to Smash Bros. Any fire move will detonate it, so if I just come here and beat it up... So there are some strategies to it, so if you're a character like Mario with Fireball or Zelda with Dins, if you happen to throw this over here, your opponent's over there, they're recovering, like, you can do some shenanigans with it. But it's like, it's too situational on your character to be really good. Super Scope actually got changed a little bit. In previous games, you know, you could just hold it down, you could, you could jump with it. Uh, now you can double jump with it, which is just 
strange. Like, I guess it makes sense, because what other item can you not double jump with? But it it's strange to me. Soccer ball is probably one of the hypest yet least impactful items, because getting the actual soccer ball to connect is usually kind of hard. Uh, depending on the angle you hit it is the angle it sends at. As soon as it despawns, another one spawns immediately. And as soon as you hit it, it, it just launches. It becomes a kill move. But the thing is, you know how hard it is to actually hit someone with the ball? It, you gotta be doing some real geometry in that head. To actually hit someone with it, you usually gotta like F-tilt them and the ball at the same time. Or do any attack with them and the ball at the same time. Yeah, with a whole lot of soccer balls, you just start playing dodgeball, but even then, if your opponent's not jumping a lot, it's, it's cool when it hits, it's just so hard to actually make a hit. Deku Nuts, this one's good. It just, if you hit your opponent with it, they just go into shield break animation and you get a punish. In an actual casuals game, there's gonna be a whole lot of stuff on the field. So if I do this, I can just kind of get some stuff. And then I can hit my opponent, hit him away, and then get more stuff. That's just kind of the beauty of items. So, forcing a shield break on your opponent is very good. Gooey Bomb is really weird because bombs don't hurt you if you blow them up in this game, except Gooey Bomb. That's the only exception. Um, it is a sticky bomb. It's like Snake C4. It transfers whenever enemies have contact with each other. A really weird trait about it is that teleport characters can transfer it mid-teleport. So if you know your teleports, it's really good. Looks like you cannot catch it during teleports. You can only transport it, which is probably better. So if I grab him and throw him, it's possible every time we come in contact with each other for it to be transferred. The Steel Diver. This is one of those things, it doesn't last long, but this is a super obnoxious projectile to deal with because there really doesn't feel like there's a good answer because you can just spam it so easily. Back Shield is one of those items where it's just like, what's the consequence of having it? You pick it up and then suddenly your back can't be hit. So if you're a character with a good back air, most notably Donkey Kong and Mario, characters like that, you can now just spam your back air with no consequence whatsoever. Boomerang is probably one of the most obnoxious projectiles because it's just Falco Laser that sends up. And like, you can combo out of it super easily. And the reason a lot of people don't like it is because sometimes they pick it up and they can't get rid of it because it just keeps coming back to you. Once you master the boomerang, it's, it can be insanely good. Because if you ever want to get rid of a boomerang, you just throw it down and then it becomes a neutral item yet again. So if you ever try and get rid of the boomerang, just throw it down and it becomes a neutral item. Because if you throw it forward, it becomes an active item and it's just a boomerang. So if you master the boomerang, I think you become one of the deadliest item players alive. But just because it's like that high skill cap, I have to place it not as high because I just haven't seen anyone master it yet. But I do believe this has a very high skill cap. Beam Sword, uh, Peach can't pull these out anymore, but this just kind of makes your tilts, depending on the character, better. So a lot of characters get a random disjoint and also just not a bad projectile to throw. Yeah, it's a really strong projectile actually. Killing Edge. So this is a weird item. Again, jab, F tilt, F smash are all different, but as soon as that sword starts glowing, it deals more damage. So when you see that purple sword, if you're ready for it, it will be a very potent kill move. There really isn't too much depth to it. That is honestly kind of it. But if it turns purple and I don't use it, it does fade away. So you still have to be kind of quick on it. So it's not absolutely broken. Fire bar, the more you use it, the weaker it gets. It's, it's just a strong move, and the thing is, above all else, it's a very strong projectile. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. It's kind of similar to the home run bat in the sense that what I like to do with it is just to like use it mixed in with aerials. So the more you attack this move, the bigger it gets, which uh, it can get really scary. And then it just circles around a platform, or if you pick it up, its speed is also affected by its size. But if I want to just put this on the stage, it becomes a kill move. Like this move is actually insane once it starts coming around. The thing is it can still get bigger, so you just keep hitting it more and fire moves do make it bigger faster. So it becomes real scary, real fast. But you can reflect it and it becomes yours. So if you play against a projectile character, this is kind of one of the worst things to have because now that projectile is just suddenly there. Lightning's kind of how I feel about the superstar because it's never really bad to get, but it's just like, it's just such a boring item because it just makes your opponent small and that's that's it. Also, you don't even need to hit lightning. If you just run into it, it activates. Air is good. It's just a neutral projectile and then it hits the ground and then it's just a whole lot of spikes. It does not damage the user who placed it, but 
a lot of these bad boys and it becomes scary. I don't know why they made this a bomb, but you just throw it down, you can hit it and it goes immediately. And then in X amount of time, the ship will just magically come down and explode. It's a very easy move to sneak by your opponent because sometimes they don't even know you did it and then it just magically appears because me just setting it here, a lot of time can pass, especially if we go off stage. Now it's no longer on screen. And then if we just start playing over here, like, uh-oh, and then it just comes down. Um, see, it just launches immediately, and it's kind of like the drill, but it goes up. This is a mashing challenge. You can throw it at someone, and if they mash out, they live. If not, they die. Which, sometimes you don't even realize it got you until you start flying off. So, um, like, if you start mashing late, you're probably dead. If you hit it enough times, it just breaks. So, who cares? Yeah, so there are cool combos you can do. I've seen someone get one in an actual match, but even then, it's really hard to connect. If you throw the beetle and it doesn't get anyone, you just waste the beetle and it disappears. So if you really want to preserve it, you can just keep down throwing it, and then it still spawns an item. So that's how you can preserve it. Um, the only counterplay is that literally any move will reflect it, not just a reflector, but a jab as well. The Mario Kart Blue Shell is really good. It has a little hitbox on startup. All this really does is force an opponent to do something. And you can grab them, you can make sure it hits them. But like, the thing is, you can air dodge and avoid it, but your opponent has to respect it. And that's what makes it good. I feel like this is the staple Smash Bros item. Um, it's just good. I mean, there is some counterplay depending on who you're playing against. Um, you're not actionable when you're off stage with it, so it's very scary. So it looks like if you're in hit stun, because it's scary when you get thrown off with the hammer, because normally you should just die, but if you mash Z out of hit stun, it looks like you just drop it, which is game changing, because that was not in previous Smash games. That's kind of why the hammer just sucks. Golden Hammer is similar to the hammer, but. Um, you can mash jump and float, which is not something everyone knows about. And you, if you just keep mashing jump, you just keep floating. It's really good. There is a limit to it, so you can't just uh, grab the hammer and then just uh, float off stage because eventually you just will fall. And the hammer duration is not up yet, so you just die. Eventually, we will get it just by testing, but there is a random chance to have a squeaky hammer. And it doesn't do damage, it just puts you in the hammer state and you just get bullied. Let's talk about Mr. Saturn. You actually see him without items because Peach can't pull him, but Saturn doesn't really do anything. So they say, and then you learn what happens if you hold shield against him. Uh, he just breaks it. Wait, like he'll break a full shield. It doesn't matter if you're Puff or whoever you are. In this game, I think if he's Z-Drop with you. Um, Z-Drop breaks it. It's really weird in this game, because even if he's just active, like, shield over there. So that's new to this game, I think, that it's just, if he's active at any point, uh, he breaks shields. It's not even uh, just whenever he's thrown, it's now if he's active at all. Everyone knows, don't shield Saturn, but the thing is, it's really scary, just because it's Smash Bros. Like, I'm sure you didn't even think about it that time. It's just, your instinct is to shield in this game, whenever yeah. an attack's coming. So it's very possible to just accidentally get someone, even if they know it. If you just have Saturn, like you have so much stage control, just because like people are now scared to shield, which is a huge part of Smash Bros. I feel like there are a lot of S tier items because who doesn't want to be super? Everything's bigger, everything's better. Like you just hit harder, man. Then the 37 damage with one hit. Yeah. So fun fact, you do not take more damage when you're smaller but you deal more damage if you're bigger. You do take more knockback if you're smaller, but it's just, uh, it's interesting how that dynamic actually works. Pitfall is one of the moves where it's just, it's good because there's no commitment to it. You just throw it down and then it's there for a long amount of time. So if I just cover the stage with two of them that just spawn, I now just control more on the stage. And it doesn't even matter if it actually connects because just the threat of it, if your opponent remembers, it's now constantly there. And if your opponent doesn't remember, then they just get hit by it. A very important thing to know is that pitfalls spike. I think bumpers are really funny because all they do is mess up the game. It, it's kind of like a Lolan executor, which it's just, you don't really know how it's gonna impact the game when you use it. Because normally you don't get bumpers like this and you're not stuck in a little hole. 
Because I'm actually stuck right here. Okay, there we go. There you go. Yeah. That's scary. You cannot even grab that ledge now. It is uh, no two frames. It's my own bumper, and I can't even do it. So it looks like if you come like right below it, yeah, it, it depends on how you come at it. It's still really good. Some characters just won't be able to grab ledge right there, actually, though. So. Yeah. The real mean thing is, uh, yeah, like, look at that. That actually successfully two-framed him, and now he died. Green Shell is probably one of the most fun items in the game. It's an insane kill move. Like, just, you can just jump on it, and it just launches. At high percents, it just absolutely destroys you. And you can hit it with different moves, and it becomes stronger and faster. Home Run Bat is probably one of... If you, it's like, if you're good with items, this is your favorite weapon to get. Because you can just control the space so well by using aerials or and bat. If I'm just doing this, I'm covering every option. And then, like, dude, it's scary. You shouldn't get hit with that. But it's still just a lot you're throwing down by just always having this bat on you. And the case of a free-for-all, you're going to hit someone with a bat. It's yeah. really good. It knocks down. Sends people off stage. Yeah, the bat is by far the strongest battering item in the game, which makes sense. I think some casuals might actually get upset if we don't mention that this is a one-hit kill. So, you got that, but this is just so much harder to hit in an actual game. But it's still possible, and dear lord, dude, you need to be stopped. Here, does that break shield, though? Let me see. Yeah, so then yeah. it's a free kill right there. Yeah, so if you're in a situation where you have to land in front of it, and shield, then you just get hit anyways. It's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. I think drill is probably one of the better items, just because it's two parts. One, you have the drill that goes out, and sometimes you just die. And then even after that, I have an insanely strong base projectile. Like, it's still really good, does 25%. Holy crap. And here, here's a little trick for you kids at home. Um, if you do it at ledge or on the wall, it just becomes an active hitbox. Yeah, so like, Look at that. What can Girl Fox do? No, that really does beat out a whole lot of options, and most people don't think to actually use the drill like that, because they always want to, you know, hold forward, but what if you miss? If you happen to hit them off stage with uh, with anything that's not the throw, you can just do that, and it's, uh, it's pretty good. Like, you have a whole lot of options with the drill, much beyond just the actual drill itself. So uh, use it to its full advantage, it's really good. And if you're too scared of them getting out of the drill somehow, you can just throw that at them when they get far enough away, and it's really good. Our club is a lot. This move sends at very weird angles. It's like kind of omnidirectional, you just kind of send in the direction you get hit by. Like it's just, it's like a shine spike from melee, honestly. Like getting hit by the projectile, it does not match how strong it is. As far as battering items go, it's kind of weak as a projectile. But the thing is, if you F smash, or the thing is, you can do jab, F tilt, and then F smash. And F smash is super strong and throws tornadoes. I don't know why they made that so strong, but the hit just kills. And then whenever you see someone charging up, you say, hey, I want to hit them. And go hit me. Uh-oh, I have super armor on it. Why? I don't know. Even the cooldown frames of this have super armor on it. So, like, the counterplay, you gotta do it super far away, and by the time, I'm just charging another one. So, like, there really isn't much counterplay to this. Uh, motion sensor bomb, back when James Bond was the character. Um, it has a little, uh, not, it has a little startup before it actually becomes a projectile. So, like, you have to stand on it for quite a bit before it actually hurts. Um, what is cool is that you can be thrown into it. It's a proximity thing, so it still blows up. There's a lot of combo potential with that one. So, um, yeah, if you know where it is, it's honestly like Snake C4 in this game. It's much better than typical motion sensor bomb, because as long as someone gets hit near it, it still detonates. Putting it on the ground in this game is honestly not that good, because it's very hard for someone to actually get thrown into that, because people can just avoid it. But uh, throwing it on platforms is kind of what makes it good, because now there's just so much potential with it. I want to see if I do this. Uh, it sticks to walls as well, so uh, you can just guard the ledge, and that's just kind of broken, because you are not invincible for the first two frames of being on ledge. So, uh, yeah, you just kind of die to that, because it sends out. That's... Oh, it's... I think it's good. I think motion sensor is really good. Tanuki Leaf is so sick because every character gets Peach Float. You can do it insanely low to the ground. Like, this Falcon is now so much scarier. Also, it increases every character's recovery because they can float forever. Even Peach gets this float and then her normal float. Yeah, air dodge 
reads become really mean because you don't even have to like do a hard to bait move. You can just suddenly float, and unlike Peach Float, uh, you can start the float mid aerial, which that is a huge difference. So if he sees me daring his shield, he wants a shield grab. I can just hold the float and then just kill him because that's high. Show me a move. That's just that's disgusting, actually. Oh. Ooh, what a classic item! As you know. It's a bomb. Here's a really scary trick, just hold shield. If you Z-drop it, you can just do an insane shield pressure. It's not even hard, like even in the air, like you can still shield poke, you can do a lot. If they're just gonna hold shield, like there's still so much you can do with it. Like it's just a really good tool. I don't know if this was in other Smash games, I don't think it was, but now bombs spike if you throw them down. So now it spikes you if you get under it. I don't think it's if I down throw it. Yeah, so as long as you're directly below it, it will spike you, no matter how you throw it. So if he's holding a bomb and I want to try and approach him, the bomb will blow up. It's kind of like Snake's Grenade a bit. Yeah, what's interesting is if I hold the shield, I can position the bomb differently depending on how I hold it. So if someone is trying to attack me, like here, use a more, uh, like a Nair or something. Like I can position the bomb to where he's at so it explodes and hits both of them. And another nice thing about this game, or depending on how you look at it, the bombs cannot blow you up if you throw it. So even if I throw both of us here, it will not blow me up. It pretty much the only way a bomb can blow you up on your own actions is if you hit it before you pick it up. Because you have to realize it's a neutral projectile at this time, and if I haven't picked it up yet, it's not my projectile yet. Yeah, Bullet Bill is probably one of the most fun items in the game, because like, you can do slide angles with it, so you can get cool Bullet Bill things, but it's just, uh, a lot of people don't even know that you can do directions. Because if you just press A, like you just go straight forward as you would expect, which is really cool, honestly. I and a, and a little unnecessary, I feel. And if you do it at low percents to someone, it won't kill them, but you can like. Wow, got that on the first try. I love the beast ball. Beast ball is like, dude, I don't know what they did with Smash Ultimate. They added so many cool things, specifically the Super Launch Star and Beast Ball, two of the sickest items in the whole game. Um, you throw it, it just says nothing personnel, teleports behind you. It goes the opposite direction that you throw it. So, if I throw it to the left, it, well, it comes from the left, but the direction is the opposite. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So if I throw it down, it bounces off the ground, but if I throw it up, it goes up, you see, but it just continues the path. If you have a reflector and it's on the same path as me, it will still reflect and hit me for hefty damage. But the thing is, that's nice, this is a kill move. And uh, if I'm throwing it out, it's just you gotta be aware it's coming. And this is a very easy move to not realize your opponent has it. And for some reason, it does insane shield damage, which for reasons I don't really know. So I don't really expect anyone to get stuff like that, but I'll, at least like you can just send out, but it's pretty easy to throw out like lingering moves and hit them. So to show you how like strong it is, if I just throw out a move the same time as the Beast Ball, it's a guaranteed shield break. Yeah, so uh, that wasn't even hard to get, honestly. Beast Ball is kind of sick, kind of insane. One of the best items in the game because the risk it takes, it's so good. So if you don't know, if you're playing an items game and Dragoon starts to spawn, it will not stop spawning until all three parts have been spawned. So I turn them off when I play casuals because it just really slows down the pace of the game because items don't spawn and it sucks. And the exact same thing happens with Daybreak and this is just a weaker Dragoon. But you know what? It's still pretty obnoxious. So here you go. Despite me dragging Dragoon and Daybreak, um, they're still really good items. Dragoon is obviously the stronger one, but at the end of the day, they're both super good. I think this might actually be another SS tier. Because slowing someone down, like, yeah, it's... Oh, come on, man. The only counterplay is like, oh, you like your invincibility frames are also extended. But then once you wait out one of them, you kind of just get the kill, no matter what. If all of this spawns, like, I don't even have to entertain this idea. I can just go get this, deal with this, and then deal with them. Like, it... it yeah. It's so good for item control, and also just for getting a kill. And also if you die, and you're on Halo, 
and as long as you stay there, the timer will not affect you. So that's kind of the counterplay, because usually if someone's under Halo, you just see them waiting to use the timer, because then whenever they spawn, they can kind of net a free kill. He started at 70 to be fair, but it's still very easy to kill someone at zero in timer. Like, even at zero, and then imagine if items are in the play. Franklin Badge is, you know, incredible. Like, in an item-based game, what more could you ask for? It just reflects projectiles, and you don't even have to do anything with it. Just having it reflects projectiles. So it's just like, like, what's the consequence? You pick it up. If he doesn't know I have it, because sometimes you don't always know, Franklin Badge is super small and hard to even know they picked it up. Like, sometimes you just play games and you don't even realize your opponent got it. Like, it's super hard to know. So, like, it's just... Uh, in an item-based game, like, that's one of the best things you could have picked up. So, I wouldn't necessarily call Superstar a good item on its own, but it's like, when are you ever upset when you suddenly become invincible for an extended period of time? Yeah, because now I control everything. Like, any item spawns, it's mine. Yeah, like, I can't push them away like you can for other items. And the thing is, if I get it, then, uh, what, what's he gonna do? Like, if another item spawns and, like, he wants the Warp Star, like, he cannot compete me for it. So when it comes to Pokeballs, it's kind of random what you get. And depending on how good it is, is how good it is. But everyone wants the Pokeball, so we're just gonna put this at the top of S tier because, well, if you wanna know how good it is, just check out our Pokeball tier list video. Yeah, and the Final Smash is kind of easy because this has to be the best item in the game because this is the item that everyone stops playing the game and tries to get. It's a little varied per character depending on how good the Final Smash is. And if you wanna know how good, check out this video. The Assist Trophy one is hard because you don't know what you're gonna get, but Everyone wants these whenever they come out, so if you want to know just how good it is, check out our Assist Trophy tier list video, because some of these Assist Trophies are really, really good. So thanks for watching our items tier list. We really appreciate the views. If you want any other tier list, let us know in the comments what you want to see, and we will do our best to do it. So be sure to subscribe, all that, and outro, bye!